first contact with Joshua Pope. Hello, Earthlings. How you doing today? Welcome to First Contact Radio. We've made it to the end of Friday, the first week in October. First weekend coming up in the month of October. We are in the fall season. Halloween is just a couple short weeks away. Today is the sixth day of October 2017 on the Gregorian calendar. On the Jewish calendar, the date's different. Today is the 16th day of Tishri. The 16th day of Tishri, right here. It is the Second day of Sukkot, which is one of the holy days in commemorance of the time that the exodus from Egypt happened. Okay, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. It's the year 5778, so it's different than our year 2017. This is from creation, so when we have the time that we just looked at a week ago of Rosh Hashanah that represents the beginning of when Adam and Eve first were around according to this numerical system here, this calendrical system. Sun sign is in Libra. We could see we're at 13 degrees Libra. We have to go to 30 degrees so we're not halfway there yet through this sign so it gives you an idea how much more time we're going to be in this particular sun sign. Our conscious mind focusing on wanting to balance out aspects in our life, to clean up the karma in our lives, to see justice in our lives. All this is expressed and accomplished through the process of air, saying and doing the things that help us and avoiding the things that hurt us. And we see that our moon sign is still in Aries. It will be transitioning out because we're already at 24 degrees so we're almost out of Aries and we'll be into Taurus over this weekend. Taurus being an Earth sign. Okay, so as you know, this is Libra, Air, all about using words and actions to balance out the aspects of our life, saying the things that help us, avoiding saying and doing things that hurt us. And of course the underlying Aries, which is stimulating us to move forward with our ideas, our intentions to organize things because that's what the whole concept is. The better organized we are, the better we are able to move through life and be more effective. And then our moon sign over the course of this weekend is going to change. It's going to move into Taurus. Taurus being the earth sign that is all about, here we go, this is representative Taurus, earth sign, the Hierophant, the spiritual teacher. It's all about acknowledging that, yes, we are in a physical realm, but the physical realm has an opportunity to really experience fully what it's capable of by simply allowing that spiritual essence within it. So over the weekend, we'll be able to really look at the physical world and appreciate it, but appreciate it from the understanding of the spirit that does flow through us as we move through this thing called life. All right, all right, so that gets us started where we're going. Let's just make sure that we are focused on the way in which we use the air around us. And so we're dealing with air, and we're dealing with fire, air and fire. Just remember, air and fire can work nice together. The air can create a nice uh, breeze so that the warmth from the fire can be very nice, maybe warm the area, or the air can blow out the fire, in which case there's too much action, too many words, and it blows out the creativity. And then once that happens, then it leads to the next phase where things get stimulated, which is aggression, anger, and so on. So we need to balance those out so we do not uh, cancel one energy out with the other. All right, let's uh, switch gears here. We're going to take a little bit further look at what was going on with the big story of Las Vegas because there's continual adjustments over the course of this week. There's been continual progress being made in the investigation. Of course, you're not hearing this investigation being told to you directly on any of the mainstream channels. 
The reason being is the FBI, who is running the show out there, well, they're being very cautious on what they are allowing to get out to be said to the public. Why would that be? Well, it looks as if this was a FBI operation that went bad, a sting operation. It's looking like Stephen Paddock was a undercover agent. Now, of course, this is purely speculation until there is actual confirmation of this, but there is continual evidence showing that this man, Stephen Paddock, was involved with the FBI to some degree or another and that this operation took place was a sting operation that was going to try to rein in some terrorists that might have been involved, ISIS terrorists. However, as we know, things went bad. Stephen Paddock has been blamed for this. I believe, and there are many others who believe, that he was probably dead by the time that this incident occurred, and he is now the one who is getting all the blame. So who is to blame? Well, right off the bat, we did get notification from ISIS saying that they were to blame. Instantly, the media has jumped up and saying, no, ISIS claims everything. The FBI is saying that they are not uh, ruling and considering that to be a viable uh, comment from ISIS. And the question is, why are they being dismissed so easily? It's taken them nearly a year to try to figure out whether or not Russia has any connections to Trump. And yet they're still working on that. But within a matter of hours, they were able to say that this this uh, confirmation message from ISIS is not real? Come on, give me a break. We all know that that couldn't happen. We know that it's a bunch of nonsense for them to try to tell us that there was no involvement, especially since there is a claim from ISIS that they did do it. And then the mainstream media, of course, coming out with the phrase that they're telling us over and over, how ISIS always claims responsibility. Well, that is inaccurate. ISIS has claimed responsibility for a number of things, and thus far, it seems that there's only been a small handful, maybe three at the most, out of 50 such examples where they have actually not been accurate. So there's a good degree and a good chance that it is accurate, as they are saying. So if we follow that, that line of thinking, what we have here is an undercover FBI agent who was doing a sting operation at the Mandalay Bay. He may have been doing these for some times because there seems to be other moments and times where he had these types of rooms booked over there. There's connections with uh, airplanes and, and airplane numbers connecting to Stephen Paddock and connecting him to you know, alleged FBI uh, agents, other runs and operations. So enough evidence seems to be there to suggest something more than meets the eye. But here's another piece of the puzzle. We keep asking the question, why was nobody seen walking through the lobby? Why was nobody seen carrying all of these guns up to the room? Why? Where is the footage for that? But did you know that there are rooms above the 32nd floor? The room 35 through 39, those floors are part of the Four Seasons Hotel. It's a separate hotel, like a hotel within a hotel. And guess who happens to be part owner of those Four Seasons hotels? Saudi Prince, the Saudis. They're up there. Here's an article which speaks to that effect. Prince Alouid meets Four Seasons and Cascade Management Kingdom Holding Company owns 47.5%, along with Bill Gates, who also owns 45%. 47.5%. HRH Prince Alouid bin Tal bin Abdulaziz Al Saad, chairman of the Kingdom Holding Company, KHC, met Mr. Alan Smith, CEO of Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, and Mr. Randy Jack, Cascade Management, during HRH's visit to France. The meeting was also attended by Mr. Samuel Zok, chairman of CEO of Kingdom Hotel Investments, and member of Kingdom Hotel's board of directors. During the meeting, they discussed issues related to Four Seasons Hotels, Cascade Investments, and KHC, in addition to the latest developments. Moreover, KHC owns 47.5 stake in the Four Seasons, which is co-owned by Bill Gates, Cascade with 47.5, and the remaining 5% owned by Mr. Isidore Sharp. 
Okay, so we have the top four floors here that are Saudi based floors. So here's another little posting here. It says excellent hotel with private entrance away from the hustle and bustle of Las Vegas. And this is referring to the Mandalay Bay top floors. This was a fantastic hotel stay located at the top floors of the Mandalay Bay Hotel itself. However, the design is made so that the Four Seasons would have its own car entrance, its own lobby and elevators, and this way you don't need to mingle or scuffle with the hordes of Mandalay Bay hotel guests, which are a lot. So what you have here is you have an entrance from the top floors. You have a helicopter pad up there, so you wouldn't need to be bringing anything in. You could bring it in through the upper levels. You could bring things through the other entrances, which not are not entrances that are privy to the people of the Mandalay Bay. So there's lots of ways that things could have been done. So I think that's a very important part of the picture here, just to throw into the mix. Here's a series of questions. Question number one, why did it take the cops 72 minutes to break into the shooter's room? Good question. New timeline of the October 1st Las Vegas shooting shows police were outside the alleged gunman Stephen Paddock's room on the 32nd floor 12 minutes after the shooting, but waited more than an hour to break into the room. Okay, here we have question number two, brother of Las Vegas shooter linked to the 19, 2016 Orlando gay nightclub mass shooting. In the early morning hours of June 12th, a lone gunman named Omar Lakin killed 49 and wounded another 53 inside the Pulse nightclub, a self-described gay dance club in Orlando, Florida, making it the worst mass shooting of the history of the United States until the Mandalay Bay Las Vegas shooting. Eric Paddock, the brother of the alleged Las Vegas shooter, 57-year-old, lives in Orlando, Florida. Is he talking about this? Uh, Shepard Abilis of Intel Hub discovered that the chair of the board of the Central Florida Arch is a woman named Sarah Brady. Brady specializes in crisis management and is identified as a public relations representative on the One Pulse Foundation's website. Brady's official website brags that she has managed some of the biggest crisis reputation management challenges in recent history and has worked with Pulse Nightclub after the shocking shooting was made news in June of 2016. Okay, so now we have a connection with him through this organization to the Pulse shooting, which again is strange that they all are seeming to be connected. And the one that is really significant to this piece here is the CEO of MGM, owner of Mandalay Bay, sold his stocks before the shooting. Okay, so this is a significant piece. The 43-story Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas is owned by the Mandalay Resort Group. Formerly, Circus Circus Enterprise is one of the largest casino operators in the world, whose properties also include Luxor Casino and the hotel in Las Vegas next to the Mandalay Bay, curiously. Five top floors of Mandalay Bay are occupied by the Four Seasons Hotel, which is owned by Bill Gates and Saudi Prince Alouid bin Talel. Another curious thing about Mandalay Bay is the numbering system. The hotel levels 40 through 43 are numbered as far as 60 through 63. Mandalay Bay Resort Group including Mandalay Bay Hotel and Casino, is owned by MGM Resorts International. James Murrin is the chairman and the chief executive officer of MGM Resorts. And uh, it shows all together on July 31st, he sold, sold shares of MGM stock, totaling more than $22.6 billion, leaving him now owning only 71,442 shares of the company valued at a mere 2.4 million. Okay, so if we look further into this, I don't have links here, but if we look further into this, we find that MGM has other connections and ties to terrorism and the Muslim Brotherhood, and that they've been helping to provide funding to this organization. So you have the MGM Grand Properties which owns the Mandalay Bay, which was attacked. There was also, at the same night as the Mandalay Bay attack, you could hear on the police scanner that there were five other attacks going on simultaneously, five other reports of gunfire. 
and these were at the Excalibur, Paris, New York, New York, uh, Bellagio, and um, what did I say? Uh, Circus Circus, or Caesar's Palace, excuse me. And then there was a suspicious package over at the Luxor. So we have all of these properties owned by the MGM, which have connections with the Saudis and the Muslim Brotherhood. And then we had this incident at the Mandalay Bay, which is being talked about by ISIS, who is taking credit for this. And ISIS is connected with the Saudis, who have interest in the top floors of the building, which would allow them to have access from above coming down into the building to do whatever they need to do. Not only that, but eyewitnesses who do work there at the Mandalay Bay have reported that on the day of this event, one of the things that they noticed that stood out to them after the fact is that there was a great deal of Muslim men that were in the hotel that day. So it was something that struck out because normally there is a, a great deal of, of foreigners that are there in the hotel, but on this particular day, they said there was, seemed to be an extraordinary amount, more than usual, which brought some questions of why this was the case. And now in hindsight, can look back and say, well, maybe this was the case because there was something bigger being planned. Now, here's an article that came out and a very interesting image on here. This is in relation to ISIS claiming responsibility. New ISIS infographic on Vegas shooting claims Pata converted six months ago. Okay, there's an image. Looks like the Mandalay Bay. FBI investigators walked through the scene of the shooting near Mandalay Bay October 3rd. The Islamic State continued insisting that they have a connection to Sunday night's massacre in Las Vegas. The publication of an infographic about the crime filling the second page of their 16-page weekly newsletter. Today's release marks the 100th issue of Al Naba, which is distributed in ISIS territories and online via mediums such as Telegram and social media such as PDF. ISIS claims through the Amak news agency Monday morning that the Las Vegas attacker is a soldier of the Islamic State who carried out the attack in response to calls for targeting coalition countries. They claimed that he had converted to Islam recently. In the new Al Naba issue, the terror group claimed Stephen Pata converted to Islam six months ago. ISIS persisted in its full court press effort to claim responsibility for the attack after the Amak news agency claimed with their official Nashir channel and affiliated with Al Dapar Media Foundation, all insisting Pata acted on their behalf of the terror group. The newsletter used the nom de guerre that ISIS bestowed upon Pata earlier this week, Abdul Abu. Abdul Bar al amerki the American. The brother Abdul al Abdul Bar stationed himself in the invasion of the 32nd floor of the hotel, overlooking a concert, opened fire continuously on the crowds using 23 guns and more than 2,000 rounds, and died. May Allah accept him after exhausting his ammunition. Okay, a little bit more here. But if we look at this infograph that was in their magazine, that they distribute to other ISIS members. Here we have the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Okay, but of course here in the States we have the FBI saying, oh, there's no connection between ISIS and this event, even though they're claiming to be the ones who are taking responsibility, even though they now have this infographic and this insert in their magazine, which has a picture of the Mandalay Bay covered in blood, even though there are these bits of evidence, our intelligence community has decided not even worth looking at. But they're going to spend a year looking at Trump and Russia, even though there isn't anything to find. They're going to keep looking and digging and digging in hopes of finding something. But when something like this puts itself out in their face, then they're in denial. You know why that is? Because... The Federal Bureau of Investigation is no longer the Federal Bureau of Investigation. They are the Federal Bureau of Matters, as we know from James Comey. So it determines, or it's up to the FBI, whether or not this actually matters to them. If this incident doesn't matter, if finding the truth about this doesn't matter, then we're never going to find out, because the Department of Matters, unfortunately, is taking charge of this mission. And so... These are the things that are going on out there we need to just be aware of because we are getting lied to left and right. 
All right, let's switch gears from Las Vegas over to something that may be done in the future. It looks like President Trump is going to declare that the Iran nuclear deal is not in the national interest. President Trump plans to announce next week that he will decertify the international nuclear deal with Iran, saying it is not in the national interest of the United States and kicking the issue to a reluctant Congress. People briefed on an emerging White House strategy for Iran said Thursday. The move could mark the first step in a process that could eventually result in the resumption of U.S. sanctions against Iran, which would blow up a deal limiting Iran's nuclear activities that the country reached in 2015 with the U.S. and other five, five other nations. President Trump is expected to deliver a speech tentatively scheduled for October 12th, laying out a larger strategy for confronting the nation it blames for terrorism and instability throughout the Middle East. The 12th is next Thursday. Under what is described as a tougher and more comprehensive approach, President Trump would open the door to modifying the landmark 2015 agreement he has repeatedly bashed as a raw deal for the United States, but now he would hold off on recommending that Congress reimpose sanctions on Iran that would abrogate the agreement, said four people familiar with the aspects of the president's thinking. So President Trump is taking action because it is required of him to do so in this regard. Okay, we have a, a, a set of people out there who are really confused. They want to make these whole situations um, something more than they are. Now, over the course of all of these news cycles, we keep hearing from the media that the liberals, the left, wants to disarm Americans. We're hearing it over and over and over. Take away the guns. But taking away the guns doesn't really work. You see, they took away the guns in Germany before the people were rounded up. And the people were able to be rounded up because they weren't able to protect themselves from those who took their guns away from them. And it happened over and over and, and over again in these dictatorial uh, countries. 56 million people have been died, killed by gun control because they turned in their guns and then the government that took their guns from them turned upon the people and the people who no longer had guns could not defend themselves. And then they were rounded up and exterminated. 56 million people exterminated. Sometimes it seems as if liberals think this is what's going to happen with gun control. A law is going to get passed, and then the bad guys are going to come forward and say, Ah, oh, a law was passed. Well, us bad guys who don't follow the laws, we better turn our guns in. We better turn them in now because that's how we roll, homie. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm pretty certain the bad guys aren't going to turn in the guns. I'm pretty certain the bad guys are going to laugh while the good people turn in the guns because they know then they'll have free reign to go do whatever it is they want to do. Okay. Now, last night, Donald Trump, the president of this country, made a cryptic remark, one of the many that he often makes, and it has the media and people scrambling to figure out what the heck he meant. Let me go ahead and play this for you so you can hear this. Okay, hear that? The calm before the storm. And of course, the media wants to know, what storm, sir? What is the storm that's out there that is the calm? What What do we need to know? Well, I guess we'll find out. There's a lot of things that could be part of the storm. We have situations going on with terrorism. We have situations going on with an investigation of President Trump. We have situations going on with investigations of domestic terrorism here in this country. We have the Seth Rich situation, which is eventually going to come to a head. We have the Debbie Wasserman Schultz situation with the Awan Brothers scandal, which is in the middle of, of being worked out through the court proceedings. We also have the Benghazi trial, which started this past week. These are all situations which could be something that could be dealt with. 
Let's not forget about Rocket Man over there in Korea. He's going to get dealt with sooner or later. And then, of course, the ISIS situation that is ongoing now and has continued to be going on. President Trump, in my opinion, is on top of what's happening. He's very smart about what's taking place, and he doesn't telegraph what he's going to do. It's not a surprise because he's told us along the way he's not going to telegraph what he's going to do. In the past, presidents have done that, and then it's always wondered why the bad guy gets away. It's because the presidents have telegraphed to the bad guys, we're coming after you, you better hide, and then they go hide. President Trump is a different cut than that, okay? Different cut, so we just really need to be vigilant, pay attention, let's not get caught up in all of the nonsense that's going on out there trying to divert us from understanding that America is in a situation that we really need to pay attention to. Quick summary, 1990 Muslim Brotherhood plan to take over America. You can go to firstcontactradio.com, you can find that link that is listed there. 30 years from 1990 is 2020. For the last 28 years, Muslim operatives have been embedding themselves in the United States of America in various groups around this country. We can find these groups. We understand that they're out here. We hear more and more about them. Why are they doing this? Because they have a plan to take over America. Okay, Hillary Clinton was the last piece of that puzzle. She was going to get into office and she was going to continue allow this invasion disguised as a refugee program to continue. She was going to allow all of these bad things that are going on to continue. We wouldn't be hearing about all of these arrests and these criminals being brought to justice or at least taken off the streets if Hillary was in office. This would just be moving on, business as normal. So now we have these Muslim Brotherhood jihadis embedded in our system for the last 28 years. They know that their person, Hillary Clinton, is not going to get them to the finish line in 2020. So what do you think they're going to do? What would you do if you were in that position? You'd find a way to speed up your time than you were going to take action, wouldn't you? You would call into play the various groups that are out there, the splinter groups, the groups that are out there waiting to do something. You would realize that time is short because you don't have Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama anymore to assist you with what you're doing. You now have somebody trying to shut down all the ports of entry, trying to shut down your operation. So you know time is short. And therefore, you're going to have to take action sooner than later. This is the problem that we're facing, my friends. There's an invasion going on. We see what's going on in other countries. If what truly happened in Las Vegas is the, what this theory, if it's correct about, if this was an ISIS attack on American soil that killed that many people and was part of a much bigger event that was stopped from escalating to be even bigger, well, we've got a major problem. Part of the problem is there were these ISIS terrorists still running around in Las Vegas. So we need to pay attention. We can't allow the media to continue to fool us because if we do, that will be a problem. So we need to take this time and we need to have the exodus from all of these concerns and the worries in the same way that the Hebrews escaped from Egypt. We need to now look at the the sim the the synchronicity of this event that took place in front of the pyramids and Sphinx there in Las Vegas and use that as an analysis for us having our exodus from all of this evil. So let's take a moment, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, we pray this day that we might find strength within ourselves to be able to step away from the evilness that is affecting our lives, that we might find the strength to be able to put love and positivity into the world and that we might find a way to get along better with each and every one this day, that we might make this world the world that you created it, a world of peace, harmony, love, and beauty. We pray this day that we are able to open our eyes and see what is truly going on. Let us go out there, my friends. Let us think of all the good things we have. Let us make the exodus through from all of the problems, and let us remind ourselves of the faithfulness that the great creator has for us that we might be faithful in executing the plan that we came into this earth to execute.
That's it for today. That's it for the week. I'll be back be next week. Love you. Keep loving each other. Talk to you soon. Peace. I'm out of here.